help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org. Link in the description. There's something very profound about these images and these parables that Allah and His Messenger وسلم, give to us. Because essentially, when a person is looking for stability and guidance, and we are created in toil. Most people are just going to toil in the hamster wheel until they meet their end. But when you're looking for something stable and serene, you need two proper ingredients. Number one, anchoring the heart in something that is real and something that is meaningful and something that is consistent and something that is fulfilling and something that does not change and that can withstand any storm. You know, if you're in a, in a storm, but you have a stronger center of gravity, you'll still feel the rain, but it won't take you and swoop you away. So it can withstand any storm because it's anchored in something so real, so consistent, and practiced with dhikr, practiced with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put it at ease. That is its constant anchoring on a daily basis. If you have that, and then you create the right environment around yourself, to stabilize and to maintain stability, then you have that peace that people are looking for. And this is true, subhanAllah, on an individual level, on a family level, on a community level. Let's break it down a bit. The Prophet وسلم, said about the heart, that the heart is karnisha, it's like a feather. الرياح, the winds blow it around from place to place. And so you don't want to put even a heart that is at peace and a heart that is tranquil in a desert with strong wind. You don't want to put wind around you, turbulence around you on purpose, create that turbulence because eventually if the turbulence gets too strong, it's going to make the heart shift because that's the nature of the heart. It gets turned over by the wind. So you ask yourself, what am I anchoring my heart in? And then what am I exposing it to? What am I anchoring myself in? And what type of environment am I putting myself in? If I have my heart anchored in something meaningful and I have my hand grabbing onto something consistent and trustworthy, then I'll never be lost. You can literally cast this image across every single layer of self and society. We see what a turbulent society looks like that has no consistent sense of value, that has no consistent morality, that prides itself on fluidity and seeks happiness through different material things and changing trends on a regular basis and then sells you the next thing to fulfill you when you've been unfulfilled by that trend. You see with the chaos that comes about in a society, the chaos that comes about in a family, when people get tired of each other, when people don't have anything that anchors the household and keeps the household together. Nothing is binding it together. You have a bunch of individuals living under one roof, but every individual is, is, is within its individualistic pursuit of happiness and is being sold a new wind, a new handhold, a new drug to settle the heart until eventually it ends up nowhere and the household shatters. What do we anchor ourselves in? What's the consistency that we have? What do we expose our hearts to on a regular basis? SubhanAllah, even the most pious person is not told to go to filthy places. Why? Because eventually it'll affect you. When the Prophet وسلم, was giving these narrations about the good friend and the bad friend, yes, it applies to the entirety of the Ummah of Muhammad وسلم, and there's benefit and value in that. But can you imagine who he was talking to when he was giving those ahadith? He's sitting with the greatest human beings that have ever walked collectively on the face of the earth. He's talking to them, and by extension us, and we might think to ourselves, like how is it that this even resonates with them? But they were hyper vigilant on how to anchor the heart and how to not expose their hearts to things that would cause them to be lost. At some point, dear brothers and sisters, you take a step back and you ask yourself, how anchored am I in a daily regimen and routine that connects myself to my internal purpose, to my purpose that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put me for. When someone says, my heart isn't at peace, my first question is, how much dhikr do you do? Is it really possible to be in a state of dhikr and to not have your heart at peace? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. 
when a person takes that time to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a regular basis, you know, now they package it, they secularize it, they tell you go into silence and they just remove the dhikr part. And that'll give you tranquility and remove the turbulence. Put dhikr into that meditation, into that mindfulness. Watch what happens to your heart. Because when you're saying these words, you're not just feeding your heart some sort of comfort. You're also renewing your clarified thoughts. La ilaha illallah is a concept and a deep clarifying thought and a methodology and a worldview and something that arranges our entire life in accordance with it. SubhanAllah has meaning to it. It doesn't just feed the heart comfort. It has meaning to it. When you look around and you see the glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything that He's created around you, Alhamdulillah is your expression of gratitude and there is meaning to it. It doesn't just comfort the heart, it arranges your entire life in accordance with that gratitude. And what do they tell you about mindfulness and meditation? Renew your purpose and increase in gratitude. We do that with dhikr. That's literally embedded in our dhikr. SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. And Allah is greater than anything that's going to come in between. Allah is greater than the hem, than the distress, that leads me to this place, Allah is greater than the product that is sold to me to take me away from this place. Allah is greater than my enemy, Allah is greater than myself. Allah is greater than it all. SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Anchor yourself in something. Anchor yourself spiritually in that on a regular basis, on a daily basis, and watch the turbulence go away. And then don't contradict what you're settling the heart with, with an environment that drives your thoughts, your eyes, your mind, your pursuits into absolute chaos. This is especially true for young people. When it comes to the friends and the people that you put around you, at some point, if you're going to try to pursue greatness and peace and happiness, then you have to shed people that are going to pull you away from that. At some point, and this is the greatest right when the Prophet ﷺ says, that yourself has a right upon you. The greatest right that yourself has upon you is that you connect it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and don't corrupt it for the sake of anybody else. At some point, you've got to shed the environment. At some point, you've got to shed your friends. At some point, you have to shed the things that you're exposing yourself to on the internet. At some point, you've got to limit your technology. You don't need another one million studies to tell you about how there's a link between depression and social media use. It's obvious, it's clear. At some point you've got to shed that and anchor yourself and put yourself between these two images. SubhanAllah, the difference between Tawheed and La ilaha illallah and the clarity of La ilaha illallah. All of this, dear brothers and sisters, the most frequent dua of the Prophet SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya muqallib al qulub thabbit qalbi ala deenik. Ya muqallib al qulub thabbit qalbi ala deenik. Ya muqallib al qulub thabbit qalbi ala deenik. Ask Allah, if there was any man who wouldn't have to worry about his heart, it would be the heart that was washed in Zamzam by Jibreel alayhi salam when he was a child and had all impurity removed from it. It would be the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa The one upon whom, whose heart revelation descends. Revelation that would shatter mountains descends upon his heart sallallahu alayhi wa But his most frequent dua, his most frequent supplication. Ya muqallib al qulub, O turner of hearts, thabbit qalbi ala deenik, make my heart firm on your way. My beloved brothers and sisters, there are two ingredients for a stable life. That is anchoring your heart in something real and consistent. Have a work that is consistent and that will keep you busy and that will also bring some sort of happiness and some sort of sustenance and you are passionate about it. And number two, build a right environment around yourself to have peace with these two things you need to remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pray your five daily salah recite the quran give sadaqah and visit your keith and keen go for umrah do good deeds then you'll see that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bringing peace serenity tranquility and stability in your life 
and remember don't go to filthy places bad places it will affect you no matter how pious and righteous you are and stay away from bad companions don't have the bad friends who will take you to wrong places who will help you to do wrong things rather make good friends make righteous friends those who will make you remember about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those who will take you to the masjid those who will take you to islamic lectures and discuss about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with you and have a daily routine which will bring peace in your heart and which will bring tranquility and serenity in your life and keep it continuously and don't just do it once and twice and just again become undisciplined discipline and consistency is a very big thing to have stability in your life so have a daily routine always moist your tongue in the remembrance of Allah and Allah says in the Quran ala bi dhikrillahi tatma'innu al-qulub verily in the remembrance of Allah do hearts find peace help us build an islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org link in the description